Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time, it's another German product. It's from Vandal und Goltermann. And this one is an LDE2. It's a uh, very interesting product, actually. It measures group delay and attenuation. So it's both a receiver and a signal generator. And you calibrate this to the send out uh, frequency. And then you will, it will measure the delay and the attenuation at that frequency. So that's um, that was the short version of how it's working or what it's doing, right? So the idea is there is a signal generator and here is the output. And then you put this to whatever device you got, cables, filters and whatever, right? And then you put this into the input. You can, of course, calibrate. This should be the calibrate. And then you can reference object. Then you can um, adjust for the frequencies and all the delays, references, and all that kind of stuff. So you set this for zero, and then you go back to measure uh, out of calibration, I think, right? And then you should be able to measure the the delay and the decibels and all that kind of stuff. So it's, uh, yeah, I think it should be uh, quite a cool signal generator and uh, receiver detector for all that kind of stuff. And uh, I spent a little time on cleaning it. Let me show you here in different lights. See how nice and beautiful it is. It was not exactly like that when I got it. And this is actually how this video started. This unit came this dirty, full of nasty, nasty fungus and it's just disgusting. How can it look like that? <laughs> this is probably the most dirty unit I've ever seen. But here is the secret green cleaning stuff from one of my sponsors in Germany. So thank you very much. Now I'm going to give it a good go. And then Alexa set an alarm for 10 minutes. Thank you very much, love. So, I need to wait 10 minutes and then I have to go and clean this. And then we're gonna see if it is nice and fine. Let's also try and clean the top here. I was told not to save it. Oi, 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 it's... It smells effective. <coughs> Maybe I should open a window. That is definitely dirty, dirty. What the hell? That was easy. Holy moly, I don't need to rub or anything. <laughs> that is magic. Oi, 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 oi. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Let's go clean this thing. The weight of this unit is 19.96 kilos. <laughs> it's heavy. Heavy duty. Since it, is, it was in such a bad shape with rust and mold and dirty and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I need to open it and uh, take away all the covers and do a very deep inspection before I 
try to power this up. But here you can see the mains in tree and it can also run on battery. We've got some different fuses. So this is probably the mains fuse and all that kind of stuff. I, uh, I've been googling a little bit on this unit and uh, I think they won a design prize in 1968 for this unit. So that's quite interesting. So that tells us a little bit on a little bit about the age of this product. 1968. I contacted one of my Google Meister experts in Germany and he uh, found a lot of interesting information about this unit. For example, in 1969, this unit, yeah, well, a similar unit, obviously, was used uh, in the moon landing program for data delay timing measurements. Well, that's actually uh, quite interesting. It also turns out we found uh, two web pages, two German web pages, where you can find all the data, a huge data collection and uh, schematics and all that kind of stuff. So I will put the links in the descriptions so you can uh, so you can find this and search if you want. Let's look a little bit inside this unit. It's really really beautiful design and you can see here this is a mega transistor galore PCB. I mean I actually counted all those transistors how many do you think there there are on, on this one single top board? 75! <laughs> that is amazing! And I think they, this circuit board is made by hand. So, of course, this is a 1960 design. So all those tracks, they're made by hand on transparent paper and this black tape you put on. So that is some design, definitely. I think we got all the different timing components and diode switching to, to get into all the different uh, timing sections uh, of all the settings for, for timing, obviously, right? I mean, why else are we having all those selector uh, diodes that selects different values, different transistors, and all that kind of stuff. I mean, it got to be that. But I can't find any schematic of this unit. So I can't really show you in super detail how it really works, but I can talk a lot about how I think it maybe works. Here's the left side, and this is exactly how it came when I got it. And as you can see here, everything is no, not that one, but everything is loose. So that tells me there's something in here I need to look at. It's probably defect. So this is the left side of the unit again. This is the front end amplifier. And uh, I found some information about the front end amplifier, or is it just the amplifiers in this one? But they got some patents on some of the things in here, um, probably about the topology or how stuff is uh, designed. I did uh, not find the schematic yet, so I can't tell you exactly where the fancy smancy stuff is in here, but it definitely looks really, really nice. Uh, here is a one megahertz oscillator, and I believe here is the analog multiplexing system. Let me try and get some light in here you see so I think this is light sensitive and light emission something that is shining light to LDRs or something like that so that means analog switching so this is of course AC amplifiers instead of DC amplifiers and uh, that is a very common way to do stuff to make it very very stable really beautiful cases and of course all this fantastic mechanical implementations 
on big hefty uh, metal adds up uh, so this all explains the 20 yeah near 20 kilos this unit uh, weighs here is the bottom part of the unit again we see a lot of tuned circuits uh, all those inductors and transformers and such absolutely hefty design yeah i am missing some inner shields here i guess we got some screws here for it or something like that really big read relays and that will be the mechanics for the fine tuning or the now it's a see if i pull i don't know if we can see what is going on but then it goes from fine to coarse uh, the adjustments quite interesting the way that it is made and then there's a gearbox so it goes down instead of yeah there's a 90 degree coupling in here i don't know if we're gonna go in there and have a better look but it's of course super duper beautiful that will be the calibration switch that one see <laughs> nice nice and again a lot of transistors in all the different units nothing spared maybe there's another board under this one because this is in a very different height uh -huh. here is the rear side of the unit the three main calibration setup switches they actually go all the way through the unit to the back like this and see how they made the cable connections to the circuit boards that is just fantastic so this is actually single pin connector so you can pull out and do service on your circuit boards that's a little Oh, those are super top quality trimmers and again a lot of transistors it is amazing maybe we can know we can't look down here but there is something going on here so yeah this is the rear panel obviously this is the battery uh, power entry mains entry and uh, mains or low voltage uh, fuses and here is the right side of the unit. And that is exactly why I wanted to show you, uh, I'll talk about the battery power entry. So this unit can of course run on mains power, but also battery power for field measurements or whatever you wanna do. So that is why there is a normal power supply in this one, but there is also a switch mode power supply. And that is, the fantastic switch mode power supply right here look at that all those big hefty germanium power transistors and then we got two more right here and right here and they are mounted in the bottom side of a milled in thick thick see this piece of aluminium here covers the entire switch mode power supply and it's uh, about 12 millimeter thick. Oh, that is some hefty weight. And all those big caps and uh, stuff like that. So there's probably some more individual switch mode power supplies for the different voltages. And it's uh, you know, a very uh, complex power supply. Mains voltage selector is also done in a super nice way so we pull out this one and then there's an arrow here that points either down to the high voltage or up to the lower voltage modes and then you need to put this right so you could easily do this wrong but you can also easily see what you're doing here so it should not be too difficult yeah but i don't find anything like really burned or really bad or anything there's no visual problems 
So uh, I think I will try and power it up. So let's just try the power on and see what happens. Here it goes, all or nothing. So that is zero and then it goes clickety clackety. It's using 56 watts. And of course, oh, we got the most beautiful light in all the meters like that. Wow, beautiful. And because there is no input, of course it's going to search for input and it's just gonna go clickety clackety crazy. So, I actually think it works. <laughs> How beautiful is that? See what's going on here? Of course, because there's no signal. And here is how I think it actually works. If we look at the input here, right? See, it says from your reference and from your object. So I think I need to take a signal generator and put in the stimulating signal. And then I have to take the signal through something with a delay and then input it here. And then this unit will tells me, tell me all about the difference and uh, all those kind of things. And I can of course cheat a little bit because I got a signal generator um, with two outputs like that and where I can set all the phases and delays and differences and all that uh, fancy uh, things. So then we got all the individual outputs. Here it will say the difference in frequency, different in amplitude and the different in time. Those are of course output as well as also displayed on the meters. So I've been playing a little bit with this unit now and I really think it works. So here's what I've done. I got 200 kilohertz input and uh, on both of my inputs here, right? And on the delta frequency output, I got my scope. So let me try and show you. I am in now in plus minus 10 kilohertz frequency difference, right? And now one kilohertz difference, two, three, four, and so on. The delay difference will automatically lock to the new frequency. And then now there is no delay because there's no changes. See, it's the change that this one reacts to. So that means every time I change like that, see, there is a change that it responds to, right? So anyway, let me try and give it... 10 kilohertz uh, difference and this one should also say about 10 so it's a little bit too little and then i get a dc output on the delta frequency output so here if i dial around and then it goes stable like that so the clickety click you can hear is of course it's sampling the reference and the measured signals. Oh, let's try and play with the difference in signal strength. So let me try and change the input. See? A little bit up or a little bit down. And then it's going to detect that as well because it's comparing the two signals. Beautiful! So that is actually all I can show you. So thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you soon again. Bye bye.